coming out of bound for glory 2008. Our man, Wade Keller was not super pumped about the direction of TNA and even brings up some storyline aspects utilized for your match with Kurt. Wade would write Jeff Jarrett made the controversy of his utilizing the real life tragedy of his wife dying seem restrained and tasteful by sinking even lower by incorporating his daughters into the show. They actually overtly played off the fact that at some point Jeff had to tell his daughters quote, mommy's not coming home after she died of breast cancer by having angle say to Jeff's daughters through the camera, daddy's not coming home. When Jarrett won, Mike today did a shout out to the daughters as if it had been inspirational for them to watch their dad beat up a man who said, daddy's not coming home into the camera and bashing him head over the head with a guitar, but not before watching their dad take a blunt chair shot to the head. Today made it sound like Jarrett's daughters were watching and would that it would be appropriate. If so, uh, you, uh, address this in the daily star and had this to say, no, I did not know he was going to say that you told Patrick Lennon. I spoke to him about it afterwards and told him he needed to focus. I told him you're hurting yourself. Kurt is Kurt. What you see is what you get. The person we hired two years ago is not the person we have today but he's going through a lot of change outside the ring. All right. I'm confused here. The way it's positioned in the, uh, torch, it's like, Hey, this was all your idea and something you were doing. Then you're saying, no, it's not. And I can't tell if your comments about Kurt, not being the person he will, that you hired two years ago, is that in character? Is that real life combination of both? What do you make of all this? So I had to reread it in research to try to, uh, click my brain back into gear. So on the overarching kind of comments that Wade made, Keller made uh, about this, we talked, and I say we, Ron Ants, pal, the creative team. And I was, and I still am a big believer that, look, it's up to the individual first and foremost. It was up to me. It, it wasn't up to the creative team. You know, w- when you use real life, yeah, when you when I say that, uh, yes, real life, because there's a there's always a fine line, but the line kind of has to be drawn by the person that that it's their real life about. That's and right. I'm I, I was always, and I went back and forth with this a lot and had a lot of discussions. Uh, do we ignore it completely? Is is that not you know? And there's that old famous saying, uh, "Life imitates art, and art imitates life." Um, again, I don't think there is a right or a wrong decision. I, I think it's kind of trying to make the very best decision that you can possibly make, um, at the time. And we chose, okay, let's, let's touch on it. And look, if I could go back and listen to it today was, and Don West were very, very sensitive to all of it. I mean, Mike was here at the house a lot in late 2005, all of 2006 into 2007 and, and then on too, but he, he was around the situation a lot. So Mike knew firsthand kind of not just me, but the girls and, and you know, just the entire situation. So he just said, Jeff, I, I'll handle it anyway, but without question, I, I'm going to be respectful of the situation. I said, okay. So we said, let's not ignore it, but just don't go overboard with it. Well, I have to respect Kurt's feelings and knowing that, okay, he's going to take the same mindset that he knew the situation. Of course, he was sympathetic with the situation, Yeah, but he's also going to play the role of an antagonist Yes, and, and dive into that. So I was totally fine with his comments because I also knew his, you know, Kurt and me had conversations, you know, when he, obviously when he came on board, but through Jill's illness and all that, I knew where Kurt's head was at, but when you have a Patrick Lennon and I'm trying, I'm trying to think of, look, you, you can't just say, or my belief is, and I think this gets into a much broader discussion. It kind of drives me crazy this day and age when you, you, you get into a, any kind of journalist today and you just kind of like, Oh no, it's all BS. It's all kidding. It's all this, all that, that what is that real upside other than helping that publication get clicks period. 
and I understand that as well. But with that being said, I'm in character with Kurt, period. You know, uh, as, as it relates to Patrick Lennon, I'm yes. not going to just say, hey, oh, come on, guy. You know, no, that that wasn't. And, yes, 2007 and 2023, 2020, it's a different landscape. It's a different world. But I go back to my overarching theme that the talent, the next breakout talent of today's world will understand social media and use it to its advantage as opposed to the social media using them to their advantage. Well said, let me ask you this about your daughters. Mm -hmm. They, we we've talked before about how, you know, when you first started to have success on mainstream, big time television for the WWF, like when you won the title or whatever, did your dad, was your dad watching? Did your wife go? Did you call home after Were you getting these big congratulatory messages? And you were sort of dismissive of that and said, no, it was just another day at the office. Kids are a different thing. Were the girls interested and invested in your wrestling career? Were they paying attention? Did they start to pay more attention when mom was gone? And then fi- finally, lastly, did they watch this and how did they feel about it? Did you discuss it with them? I would assume, and this was, uh, the Kurt match is bound for glory. Correct. That's the one. Where, no. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. That's what Wade is talking about. Yeah, I, I think. Yes, I, I would say so. Um, believe it or not, Jill's mother <laughs> was a big wrestler, is a big wrestler. She's still living. Is a big wrestling fan. Uh, so I, I I don't know for exact, but I, I feel pretty certain, yes, that they were watching it. So you uh, assume when you're out wrestling there with Jill's mom and she's getting the pay-per-view and y'all are, and they're all watching. My guess, my best recollection. And yeah. I guess since you don't, since you're kind of fuzzy on whether or not they watch, that means they certainly weren't offended and didn't have any problems. You didn't have to put out any fires. Well, no, no, no. I mean, look, and I'm not gonna look. I can hear, I can hear it even in my head. And others said, Jeff, they're kids. They don't know any better. I did the best I possibly could in saying, "Hey, girls," and you know, Jocelyn at this time maybe 12, 11, 12, yeah. eight, nine four or five, you know, so, so you, you, you just do the best that you can and, and talk through it. I've always said this about not just wrestlers, anything role models, which can be, or should be a mom, a dad, a coach, an uncle, an aunt, a grandfather, a grandfather with, with kids are people that, that, you know, the kids have to have a real relationship, not just through a, a, a video screen. So they knew that's dad's, job they knew uh, that's his work that's that's what he does but the real dad comes home and they they're aware of that they were aware of that and they uh you know th- that that's that that was the reality having a conversation with him about it 